Hey everyone, what's going on? And we're back with 10 more UX stages. And yeah, some of these are, are really difficult, so you could really start to feel it. I had quite a bit of a uh, tough time, you know, one of the stages took me several tries. Probably about, um, I want to say, maybe like four or five tries or something. It, it was absolutely insane. It was not a fun stage. Uh, but, you know, I still enjoyed it, and we still beat it itemless, so, you know, if I threw in that attack power, I definitely would have beaten it. Uh, so yeah, it's not too tough, it's not gonna cost you a whole lot of coins if you decide to, uh, use some coins, but it's tough if you're going for it itemless, and it's probably also tough if you try and S-rank it, but, you know, if you want to, uh, win itemless, I felt like it was tough. You know, but maybe there's a better team uh, than uh, what I used. Anyway, you know, we have uh, Metatite. Metatite is not a difficult one. Uh, just goofing around, going in with Shiny Mega Charizard and Y. Uh, just fun. Not the best Mega on this, just because it's not going to get rid of all those blocks. You know, you'd probably prefer, like, a Tapper just to get rid of them. You know, or, you know, or even a Rock Eater or whatever. There's some Ice, which is also a little bit annoying. Another thing, Shiny Mega Charizard and Y will not remove. I mean, it'll get rid of some of them. It'll hit some of them. But it's not going to hit all of them. Uh, I have uh, Silvalli just because this is a three Pokemon stage. So I totally felt like it was worth it. Uh, yeah, just Mewtwo is strong. Yeah, it's not really a difficult stage. I'm sure you could have strength this itemless. In fact, I know you can. Uh, you just need to combo a bit. You know, you have to have some RNG on your side. Some lucky RNG. And that is basically how you're going to do it, I guess. But yeah. So this is Metatite, and yeah, not a bad one to start things off with, though, even though we didn't S-rank it. Uh, not a big deal, so yeah, not a bad one. But yeah, so we're going to go ahead and just about uh, finish this one up. And that is really nice. So there we go, that is Metatite. So goodbye, Metatite. See you later. Uh, so yeah, we do go ahead and now we combo, right? <laughs> we're getting a bunch, you know, a big combo right now. You know, that, that tends to happen with me sometimes, you know. You, you don't combo for most of the stage, and then after you beat the stage, it's just combo city, and it keeps on going. Keeps on going. But that is okay. Nothing wrong with that. So, yeah, that is stage 221, and we do go ahead and defeat Metatite. So, I will definitely take that. And moving on. Yeah, guys, remember when I said I wasn't too sure on Hammering Streak? I didn't really think it was that great. I was wrong. It's actually one of the best abilities in the game, in my opinion. Um, so I would totally recommend... You know, I know Shiny Haluch is over with, but I would totally recommend farming Hammering Streak if you can, or investing in, in it using your skill cookies. It's really good. At skill level 5, it does 9 times the damage on a streak of 3 or more. So I was actually thinking of a survival mode team, and the ones I thought of were Shiny Halucha, Sylveon... Umbreon and Flareon, and that will cover every boss stage in survival mode. Uh, you'll have some trouble, like you'll have trouble against like poison types, uh, because you have two things that resist it. So, um, yeah, you could um, run into some bad luck, I guess. Not really going to have a good time on flying types either. So, uh, I definitely do want to try it. I invested in Shiny Halucha, and I began investing in Sylveon. Not Sylveon, um, Umbreon, just because Umbreon has a, a terrible drop rate. I'm not sure what Flareon's drop rate is, or Sylveon. I think it's a little bit better, but either way, uh, let me know what you think of that team. Let me know if there's like a better combination of uh, Hammer and Streak Pokemon for survival mode. And yeah, so, I, I, but the thing is, I, I feel like it's going to be good not even in survival mode. I feel like it's going to be, it's also good outside of it against things, especially if they're super effective against it, like that Shiny Halucha was basically able to S-rank Skitty, so that is awesome. Uh, yeah, we didn't even talk about Skitty, I was just talking about Hammer and Streak and Survival Mode, so my bad, my bad, um, but it's an easy one, so it's not a big deal. Uh, moving on, we have Curlia, and I decided to use a Steel Team just because I use Poison all the time against Fairies, for the most part. I uh, don't really use Steel, uh, I don't really like Steel as much because, I mean, at least I don't have much of a, a, a tough steel team. I mean, I have Skarmory and, and Mawile, but they're a little bit outclassed. Uh, there's, I mean, there's uh, Sorgalio, but yeah, I don't really use Sorgalio. Sorgalio is definitely good, but, you know, mine's not maxed out, so I don't really use it. I know it's still good even at skill level 1, I know that, but, you know, I probably actually should have put uh, Sorgalio instead of probably Mawile or something. You know, I don't know. Or even Jirachi. I mean, although Jirachi did help Mega Evolve. Uh, Mega Evolve Aggron, so. 
Yeah. Uh, currently not a terrible stage. Uh, not a terrible stage, in my opinion. Not that bad. Uh, yeah. Not really a whole lot to say. I mean, it's just basically, you, you know the, the drill, what we did. Mega Evolve with Mega Boost Plus and, and just, you know, try to go for the burst damage. Able to beat Curly just fine. It does disrupt, I believe, if you get a, a match, a, a combo of three or less. It might be four or less. I think it's three or less. Or so, something like, it's something like that. Um, if you get those combos, it will, if you get higher than that, it will not disrupt you. So that's awesome. But Mega Aggron, I mean, doesn't really care about Curlia's disruptions. It could destroy all of them. So yeah, really not a big deal. Um, it has a lot of HP for the amount of moves it has, but it's still manageable. Not sure about the S rank. Might be really tough to get the S rank itemless. Um, I don't know. Maybe you could do it with a poison team. But either way, uh, we definitely go ahead and knock out Curlia just fine. But, but yeah, so not too bad, not too bad. Not one of the difficult stages, not not yet at least. So that is good. That is good, yeah. So actually came close on this one, but not a big deal. Still able to uh, beat it and move on. So that is nice. That is awesome. And I will definitely take that. So yeah, that is Curlia. UX 223. So yeah, guys, don't forget to follow me on Twitter. I'm going to be posting news there uh, related to Pokemon, not just Shuffle, not just uh, my videos or whatnot. So you can check the description and I will have my Twitter link in there. So thanks a lot. Anyway, moving on. Still after this stage is not fun. You know, I, I knew this one from Survival Mode. This was one of the tough ones. This isn't the stage that took me like five tries or four tries. Uh, but, you know, this wasn't fun. I did beat it on the first attempt, but again, it wasn't fun anyway. So I'm basically just going in with the last ditch effort Pokemon. You know, I'm going in with Shot Out. I make a Tyranitar just because, you know, it's, it's really, it's, because it can get rid of all these blocks or all the Staraptor's uh, disruptions, whatever it happens to be. I don't remember the last time I actually used Tyranitar outside of using a Mega Star. Usually, whenever I use Tyranitar, because I do use Tyranitar a lot, but I always Mega Star it. I never use it alone. Uh, I guess just because it really takes a long time to Mega Evolve. I think it's actually the the longest Mega Evolution at the moment. It used to be the fastest, or one of the fastest. Uh, not the fastest, but one of the fastest. But now it's it's the longest, <laughs> you know. So it's really interesting that that's the case, but. Yes, the Raptor is not a fun stage. It's not a fun stage in survival mode. It's not a fun stage in the main stages. And it's not a fun stage in the UX stages. So, yeah, this this mean bird is not a fun stage. So, uh, still able to do it, though, thanks to Reggie Rock and Last Ditch Effort. Uh, the S-Rank is going to be more difficult on this one. I'm not saying it's impossible. Obviously, it's not impossible. People have S-Ranked every stage in the UX set. But, you know... You, you probably have to add on an attack power and a plus five. And I don't know, probably a disruption delay. And it makes, I would probably go all out. I, I, I'm sure you don't need a complexity, but you probably need every other item. But yeah, uh, not worth the coins in my opinion. It does disrupt some ice later on. It's like more Staraptor, I think, and blocks or whatnot. Whatever it happens to be. Uh, not a big deal though, you know. Actually, it is a big deal. What am I saying? Of course, it's a big deal. You know, uh, it is a big deal, but you know, you're still able to, uh, you know, if you're up to this part, hope point in the game, hopefully, you could still, uh, move past the Raptors. You should be able to just fine. So, yeah. Not really sure what else to say other than what I've already said about Star Raptor. But it, yeah, so disrupts with, actually it doesn't disrupt with Star Raptor, it disrupts with Star Avian, my bad. But, you know, uh, that's not a bad disruption, so the starting board is annoying, and its tankiness is annoying, and you know, I guess, but I guess um, Mega Tyranitar, even Mega Aggron if you want to go with that, or, or, you know, Shiny Mega Charles X, I mean, they can handle Star Raptor's disruptions just fine, I guess, so, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I just wanted to ride a touch just because it is super effective and it is a three tapper. So uh, that's why I, I wanted to go with that one. So, you know, I actually expected Staraptor to have more HP, to be honest with you. I, I don't really know why I expected that, but I did expect it. Um, but yeah, not going to be the case. It's still tanky, but yeah, not really that bad, I guess. Uh, not the worst of the worst, but you know, not fun 
that's basically what I'm trying to say. I mean, that basically wraps up the Raptor. So, Reggie Rock did fig, uh, uh, finish it off, but we didn't need Reggie Rock. We would have been able to finish it off anyway. But, yeah, that was quite a lengthy stage. Not the lengthiest. We're going to get up to um, a another stage, one that I've been fearing this whole time. I've mentioned it before in the past, so you guys... If you look at the thumbnail, you could probably guess it, but, you know, anyway, Clink is not a bad one, so we'll definitely go ahead and take on Clink. Going in with Shiny Halucha again. Uh, yeah, Hammerman Streak is one of my favorite abilities now. You know, I I'm not saying that it's necessarily better than for survival mode than, like, the Shot Out, Flygon. You know, I'm not saying that, but I do want to uh, try it out just to see how things go. And, yeah. Uh, I, I guess a bad thing about hammering streak is if you're only going with one pokemon like i am right now uh you you might not have shiny holucha matches and you might break the the chain basically so that's a little bit unfortunate that's why you, it's probably better to have like two or even three or even a whole team of um hammering streak pokemon so yeah that, I wish there was a, a ground type <laughs> hammering streak. Then definitely replace that shiny halucha for whatever the ground type would be. That would be awesome, but unfortunately not the case. So yeah, Clink's definitely not a bad one. You know, we have the Mega Gosh Chomp able to do a lot of damage. So, you know, Flygon removing some of the Clink that were on the field. It does disrupt its rocks. Not a big deal. Able to, uh, you know, beat those just fine. So definitely go ahead and take that. Definitely go ahead and take that more rocks. Yeah, so not a bad stage. We didn't S rank it, but that is okay. Uh, we don't have to S rank it. So, uh, yeah, do go ahead and beat Clink. 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 <laughs> I, I actually really like Clink. You know, it's really, it's, I, I'm not going to say it's one of my favorite Pokemon, but it is a really cool Pokemon in my opinion. You know, sometimes I like these Pokemon that are made out of, you know, m machines or whatever, whatever Clink is made out of gears. So, um, Inadimate objects, basically. That's what I'm trying to say. I, like, I sometimes like this Pokemon. This is the stage that I was talking about. Mr. Mime! Let me know how that impression was compared to the animes, Mr. Mime. You know, uh, uh, I do like it in the anime. May I don't like it in Shuffle. Uh, yeah. Mr. Mime is not fun. My strategy was just to activate Spookify Plus and basically make it evolve Aggron so as fast as possible so I, I could just deal with Mr. Mime's disruptions each time that it disrupts, basically, and obviously wait until the last few moves, uh, activate Dust Noir a few times, and then Litwick, and that's how I was able to win. Uh, I came close the time before this. I, it literally must have had, like, 2 HP before I was able to... Um, be, and it did. It wasn't knocked out, so I didn't knock it out. So, you know, definitely, definitely a tough stage. Uh, it might be better to go with, like, a typeless combo Pokemon if you have, like, Hoopa or something. And instead of, like, Dustin on Litwick and just combo a lot. I'd probably still recommend a tap of probably Shiny Mega Charizard X or something. Or actually Mega Aggron and Mega Tyranitar would probably be better just because you have three taps. And that won't even destroy all the disruptions. So, you know, you need to get rid of all of that, basically. Yeah, so... Just do as much damage. I mean, this Pokemon has over 70,000 HP, so yeah, I don't blame you if you want to use an attack power, if you want to use a plus 5. Items, totally recommended. Uh, I don't think I would have been able to do this itemless without the Litwick, to be honest with you. So, you know, it, it really is not a fun stage. Not a fun stage. Uh, yeah, so I, as I said, I was basically just stalling out, doing as much damage as possible until uh, the last few turns, and I was just blowing up. Whatever Mr. Mind put on the field with Agron. I mean, that, that was my strategy. Uh, you know, I, I knew I was going to use that strategy when I began the UX stages. I knew this one wasn't going to be fun. You know, I knew Mr. Mind was just going to be smiling at me, laughing the whole time. You know, we're having a grand old time. Yeah, that, that's what Mr. Mind was doing. But, you know, it, it's kind of scary to know that it's actually not going to be the, the worst stage. Uh, there's going to be other stages that are more difficult. But, you know, that is okay. At least we're doing him itemless at the moment. So, able to do Mr. Mime itemless. So, I know he's not the worst stage in the world. But, you know, he, he really wasn't fun for me. You know, we all have those stages where we just don't have a good time on. Mr. Mime is my stage. Whenever he shows up in survival mode, my I cringe. I cringe. When I see Mr. Mime staring at me with that huge smile on his face, you know, he's going to be in my nightmares. You know, I, I have like 
a phobia of clowns now. No, I'm, I'm just kidding, guys. I'm just messing around. You know, but yeah, so I don't know why they gave him so much HP, though. I don't know why Mr. Mime, even Mime Jr. is tanky, you know, but Mr. Mime is just, it's just bad. He's a bad one, but yeah, so yeah, just doing damage until we can get the last few moves, you know. One time, uh, there was one time where I would have won, I just, I just um, I, mi I missed it, he had like 2 HP, as I, I told you that already, and then there was another time where I had a 4 match of Litwick, and I would have won had I knocked it out, but Litwick, Litwick didn't activate, so, you know, I, I almost won a couple times, not gonna be the case, but at least I do win this time. You know, I could have thrown on that attack power, and I actually debated it, but I, I decided not to. I decided to just, you know, continue going forward itemless, and, you know, eventually I was able to do it. And it's a little bit annoying, because this stage takes like six minutes, so, you know, not a, not as long as Snorlax, but it's definitely more difficult than Snorlax, in my opinion. But yeah. If you're playing through the stages, let me know the most difficult stage that you've gotten up to so far, you know. Um... Yeah, so, anyway, still trying to see what I'm going to do. I have a couple of five matches, uh, you know, I was trying to set up, uh, yeah, so, anyway, yeah. I do have the five ma match of Dusk Noir, which is good. Uh, so, obviously going to go for that. And then, yeah, so, at this point, I felt comfortable, but, you know, I, I knew I could still miss, like, Litwick and Dusk Noir and whatnot. So, I knew there was still a chance that I could lose. Um, so activating that three match, so that's really cool. That's really good. And then, you know, there's, um, yeah, like no dust nor so had to go for that. Now we need the Litwick four match. Litwick comes through, able to beat it, do over 20,000 damage thanks to Spookify Plus. Even if Spookify Plus wasn't activated, we would have still knocked it out. But yeah, look at that. <laughs> look at all of that HP. So yeah. Bye, Mr. Mime. <laughs> Bye. Uh, so let's see. Now we have playing, going in with the shiny Halucha again, hammering streak. Uh, you know, I, this stage is not tough. I wasn't able to S rank it. Uh, I didn't even go in with the Mega. Uh, this is probably a better way to go about this stage. Shiny Mega Charge at X would be better. I mean, you definitely want a Mega to get rid of a lot of this junk. It has blocks, it has clang on the field. You know, hammering streak. I didn't really go for hammering streak too much in this one. I have hit pad on just in case. I didn't know how tanky this stage was going to be. Uh, I mean, I, I knew what the stage was like. I just didn't know how tough it was going to be. So, yeah, setting up uh, the full match of Flygon, you know, able to get damage that way and also able to remove Clang. So that's really good. Yeah, that is really good. Uh, activating Hammer and Streak there, so that's nice. That is nice. I actually decided to go for the Buzzwall 4 match, I believe, instead of the Shiny Halucha. I was debating about... Actually, never mind. I went for Shiny Halucha. Uh, I was debating between the Buzzwall 4 match and the Shiny Halucha, but I just went for Halucha. Uh, yeah, but as I said, if you don't have a, uh, a, another 4 match, or another match of the Hammering Streak, it's going to end the chain, which is really unfortunate, but that's just the way the cookie crumbles. And... uh yeah, so even if you go in with a full team of Hammer and Streak Pokemon, you're not guaranteed to always get Hammer and Streak because it could disrupt you with, um, like, say it puts itself on the field or whatever. If that's, like, in a row, it could disrupt you with that and break your chain. So, you know, it's it's not a guarantee. But but what I do like about this compared to Shoutout is it's 100% activation and a match of 3, 4, and 5. So it's always going to go off as long as you make a match, guaranteed. So, definitely something to consider. Don't overlook it, in my opinion. It's re a really good ability, so I do plan on investing in more of those. And I'm hoping to get a survival mode run on that, just to see how it does, because not too sure how it's going to do. But anyway, uh, moving on, we do have Gothitelle. I didn't think Gothitelle was that bad. I mean, I, w I was actually going to bring the Litwick, but it does have, like, ice on the field, and I believe it disrupted with ice. So, you know, definitely going in with the Drift Limb. You know, uh, Dust Go actually would have been good as well because it does disrupt with blocks later on and th there's a block on the field. So, yeah, Trevenant, just because there's a bunch of, bunch of Gothita, Gotharita, and Gothitelle, I think I said those correctly. Who knows? But, um, 
Yeah, and just uh, Mega Bennett just for fun, basically. I have a full ghost team, so why not? We'll just go along with Mega Bennett. Might, might as well. So, yeah. So, yeah. Not a terribly difficult stage. I didn't think this one was that bad. Uh, I guess it depends on the team, but... You know, if you don't have the Driftlim Shiny, Tyranitar would actually be really good on this one. Because you can get rid of that ice, and if your barrier shot is maxed out, that's awesome. But even if it isn't, as a Mega, it would be really good to remove this ice. And as I said, it does disrupt with ice, so definitely would be a good way to go. It definitely would be. And actually, it disrupts with blocks. My bad. I, th I think it also disrupts with ice, though. You know, but um, yeah, you could... A dust go would be good as well, just so you can get rid of that those blocks. But as I said earlier in the video, but yeah, I believe it also disrupted with ice. I could be wrong, but I think it did. Well, there's more blocks, so yeah, Trevenant obviously just there for the the Pokemon as I mentioned. Uh, so yeah, not a whole lot to say. Not really a difficult stage. I mean, I guess it's not the greatest stage in the world, but it's not the most difficult one. Um, yeah, it disrupts with ice later on because I remember thinking at this point, well, Driftblim might have been a waste because there's blocks. I should have bought Duskull instead. There's only ice on the beginning field, but it does disrupt with more ice coming up. I believe. <laughs> I believe. Um, but yeah. So, you know, you could also go in with a block eating, eating Mega, I guess. If you wanted to go that route. But I feel like the Dusko would be better. Or the Block Shot Pokemon would be better. So there you go. There's the ice. So yeah maybe Shiny Mega Tyranitar wouldn't be the best choice for a Mega. I mean it's a good Barrier Shot Pokemon. But probably not for a Mega. Because it's not a whole lot of ice. It's more so Block. So either way. That's got to tell. Uh, you could see how you're feeling. And, and I guess go with your gut basically. Um. You know, going uh, basically all out in this one just because this is not a fun stage. Um, it's not really a difficult one, but it's it the disruptions are pretty annoying. And it disrupts quite often. So just going in with the shiny Mega Deonsi and Pidgey's on the field. I was thinking that, you know, I left the last spot blank. But no, I didn't. Pidgey is just an added support on the field, which is good for Curlia and Vanillix. And then Zygarde, just in case I make it to the last few moves, uh, because I figured this stage would be really tanky, as they all are for the most part. Uh, so yeah, Disrupts with Gumi later on, I think Sligu and, and Rocks and a couple of Ice Blocks and things like that. It's disgusting, it's ugly, so uh, just went in with the Shiny Mega Deonsi, and that definitely helped me out. Definitely helped me out get through all that and then you get matches of the Gumi and things like that So um, gets rid of most of them So I'd actually totally recommend the shiny mega Deonsi if you have it because you want to get rid of all those rocks You want to get the matches of the extra Pokemon and yeah You don't need those like Gumi and things for a shout out just because you have the Pidgeys so uh, you might as well uh, Go with the shiny mega Deonsi and you should be able to handle this stage just fine um, a plus 5 should be enough to get you the S rank, you know, uh, but yeah, not a difficult one with this team, it, but if you are going for the S rank, you're going to want to swap out the Zygarde Complete, of course, and add something else. Maybe uh, Rayquaza shot out, if you have these Pokemon. You know, you might not have some of them, and that's okay, but yeah, I actually ended up using Zygarde Complete in this particular run to win the match, but, you know, yeah, it disrupts with Sligo, as I said, as well, so... Getting rid of all those rocks, you could be basically match most of the Sligo, and that is awesome. Definitely, definitely, and yeah. So Zygarde Complete really helping out. Definitely able to beat the stage thanks to Zygarde Complete. So there we go. That is Sligo, and yeah, it's not really a bad one. Uh, it's definitely one that you could handle. So yeah, so that is stage UX229, and we do go ahead and move on. Past that. 300 coins again. You guys know that. Um, moving on. Metacham. This is the regular Metacham. Not the Mega one, obviously. You know. And um, I didn't feel like this one was too bad. I have Victini for last ditch effort just in case. Um, yeah. I, as I said, I feel like... Yeah, I didn't think... My basic goal was to just rely on Mewtwo uh, for Cyburst because it does have a lot of HP. So, you know, if you have Mewtwo maxed out with Cyburst, keep on activating it. And... Um, 
yeah, that's a good way to go and just do a lot of damage. So keep on matching like the four or five matches. And, you know, you'll miss them sometimes, but sometimes you'll get them. And, um, yeah, I don't know if Neuvern was the best decision just because I didn't leave the last bot blank. And, um, yeah, as I said, I didn't, I didn't leave the last bot blank and it doesn't really disrupt with much. It disrupts with a little bit. I think it disrupts with Benetite later on or something. But either way, um, yeah, just going for the Mewtwo's, just hoping to do all of that damage. Yeah, it does disrupt a Metatite or Metatram later, one of those, and it keeps on disrupting with blocks, so a Tapu would definitely be the way to go. I wouldn't recommend, like, Rayquaza or Salamence or those type of Megas just because the blocks are going to get in the way, so definitely want one of those uh, tapping Pokemon Probably Shiny Mega Charizard and X just because it may evolves. You know, going for the Cypress again. I activated it quite a bit in here, but I also missed it a few times as well. I definitely recommend it, as I said. I've said that a few times. Totally, totally recommend the Mewtwo. That's what I was relying on to itemless it, to itemless S, to itemless beat it, not S rank it. You know, you're not going to be able to uh, itemless S rank this, but you'll, you'll be able to itemless beat it, at least, if you have some of these Pokemon. You know, I wasn't sure. Uh, how difficult this stage was going to be, but um, yeah, it turns out that it's it's uh it's it's not fun, but it's not the the worst one. I mean, it's okay, it's okay. I ha I had a good time on this one. I I didn't mind this stage. This was definitely a fun one, even though it has a lot of HP. I did enjoy this stage, um, unlike some other clown that we all know and love. Uh, but yeah, I di I did this one. I did enjoy. Uh, so yeah, this is also not considered a boss stage. Mega Metacham would be considered a boss stage. Uh, I'm not sure if they only, I guess they only consider the Megas bosses. I'm not too sure if they consider like, you know, I was going to say like some of the, or well, bosses are legendaries because some of those other ones like, like, I don't know. I, we'll have to see when we get up to them, you know, but uh, either way, yeah. So this is, it does disrupt with some Metacham, so this is, uh, yeah, Metacham. So, you know, not really needing Victini just because Mewtwo came through a lot. You know, it has a 50% chance to activate. So you're going to activate it a good amount of times as you continue to go for it. So that's really nice. And that Mewtwo 5 match is definitely going to finish off Metacham. And that is awesome. I will definitely, definitely take that. So 230 stages. 230 stages. Wow. Yeah, and that's going to be it for this video, guys. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye.